sauce. Oh yeah. Let's get it. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the Weird Sauce Show. It's your host, Effin Fradzuki, right here with my digital creator, Jake Stevens. Hey everybody. That's right. Welcome back to the show. It's episode seven. Happy Tuesdays. Uh we are cruising along now. You heard me open up the episode and call myself F and Fradzuki. Yeah. Why did I do that? Well, we're going to kick this show off with a little uh, topic called F and Mecca and all of the digital artists that are coming out these days. Yeah, it's pretty fucking wild, huh? Yeah, exactly. Now, for those of you that don't know, there's this new little rapper uh, slash little digital avatar called F and Mecca. Yeah. All right. He's massive on TikTok. He's got uh, about... 10 million followers. Yeah. His videos have been watched uh, over a billion times. And all he is is a digital character. Okay. He's AI uh, produced. So um, they use AI programs to write his music, to figure out what the coolest beats are, to figure out what everybody's listening to in their playlist. Right. And then they uh, have made this character out of all this uh data yeah they take content from you know other rappers and stuff right and like lyrics and stuff and put it together correct yeah exactly yeah. so they found like playlists yeah. and they've just smashed in all everyone's the... favorite tunes and, and stuff like that right exactly yeah so f and mecca he is just a badass so basically yeah. he can do everything that real Go rappers a can do a goof Go yeah a goof so he can, he's got everything. He's got like a, a Lamborghini um, a garbage truck. Yeah. He's got a, a Ferrari little espresso maker. Yeah, there's videos of him like shooting Lambos out of like toy guns or something, right? Yeah, he's got a little AirPod shoddy yeah. little shotgun with his little AirPods in it. Yeah. Uh, he's just got a bunch of tricked out Lambo stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he could basically do anything that real rappers can't do. So um yeah, he's super dope. We're going to put a video of him uh, acting dope right on the screen right now. You can check into him. Now, um, yeah, F and Mecca, like we said, he's this whole new idea of a music artist. Okay, so record labels now, since you can do a lot of stuff digitally, are starting to push these digital characters. Yeah. Okay, there's another one out there called Little Michaela. Now, she is, this is kind of the next level. Yeah, this, this is, this is, yeah, di different. Yeah, F and Mecca is, you know it's a digital guy. He's out there. He's doing all this digital avatar shit. Little Michaela, she is an AI robot. She's a digital uh, character as well, but they have completely embedded her into real society. Right. Like, I mean, we thought, well, actually, I'm not sure we're 100% certain, certain yet, but originally we thought it was kind of like F and Mecca, right? But then we got a closer look at it, and it's just a digitalized face, on a human's body, it seems. Yeah, it seems that way. Basically, this girl, little Michaela, she is doing everything a real human does. Right. They got her showing up to Fashion Week. They got her releasing music videos. She's got a boyfriend uh, that's like a real dude, and yeah. they're hugging and going to the park. And There's doing... a whole life. She has a whole, an, an entire life. Yeah, she's got a blog. She's got uh, emotions. She's got, you know, heartbreak, and yeah. she's got her new music single. And she's she... got, like, the Taylor Swift vibe going with it too with like her music single songs about like boys breaking her heart and shit like that yeah exactly yeah it's a it's a thing it's yeah a thing. uh we're gonna drop a little uh video of that right now for you to check that out uh this is little michaela not as cool as f and mecca but we are entering this age now of uh these digital characters well i mean there's digital characters who are getting you know th like you just said about f and mecca what 10 million views on tiktok and no t no one billion views one billion views 10 million followers exactly. or whatever and uh this michaela chick has three million followers on instagram and this is just a digitally created person right or at least the face of it like we're not sure still right yeah, exactly. Now, basically, uh, for a record label, when you want to put out a new artist, you obviously have to invest some money. The old format is some rapper comes in or some artist, you think they have talent, you give them an advance, you pay them money, you pay for their studio sessions, uh, you pay producers and engineers and all of this right. team of people to try to produce this artist, and you want to only hope that you have a good product. Yeah. It's not for sure. So you put all this money into this real human artist, you're pumping out this stuff you give them a contract you put all the money in you're hoping that it's successful and you get some money out well with this new format when you have these digital artists you can have a hundred of them 
Right. Because it doesn't really matter. So you can take all the data from uh, what people like, what people are vibing on, and then you can custom create an artist specifically for what people want. Mm -hmm. So, hey, you want someone that looks like this or, oh, you want um, this style of look. Oh, you want someone that's got like if we. When you see F and Mecca, he's got a half of a gold face. Yeah. He's got blue dreadlocks. He's got gold teeth. But he looks like a rapper that, like, you would, you know, you see on TV nowadays, right? Like Little Yachty or, like, Little Uzi Vert has a diamond in the middle of his forehead. So, like, this dude isn't that far off. Exactly. So, like, that's the thing that's, you know, interesting about that as well is that he looks and sounds like one of the new age rappers that you listen to right now. Exactly. Um... So he is produced by a record label called Factory New. They are putting this whole project out. Um, he didn't start off as a rapper originally. He just started off as a kind of like digital character that was helping sell digital products. Right. So if somebody had like some shoes, you have these digital things. So F and Mecca would come in and he would like have them on and right. be previewing them. Showcase them. Yeah, and that these videos would go viral because everybody's like, yo, look at this. This is dope shit. And then you get a lot of good promotion and marketing for your product. Right. So F and Mecca originally was uh, just a little TikTok character that was getting lots of viral uh, views. And so they were using that platform to sell stuff. Now he's turned into a rapper. He's got a few songs out. Um... He just put out an NFT. Uh, many of you might know the real famous DJ Don Diablo. He's a big uh, yeah. future house electronic DJ. He just bought F and Mecca's NFT, which was a Lamborghini porta potty. Yeah, sixty five hundred USD. A toilet. Yeah, a, a Lambo. A toilet. Lambo toilet. A Lambo toilet. I mean, if you've ever dreamed of shitting in a fucking Lamborghini porta potty, like there it is. Made by yeah. a digital exactly. character. Yeah. So. NFT, or sorry, F and Mecca, he's got NFTs, he's got rap songs, he's got Lamborghinis, he can do everything, uh, he can show up at NBA games, there's a video of him like half court, so basically anything you want him to do, he can do it, hey, you want to be hanging out with these people, cool, hey, you want to be doing a concert uh, on the back of a truck or doing this or from space, F and Mecca can do it. So with somebody like him, dude, sky is the limit. Yeah, and it's interesting. We were talking a bit about it uh, before the show or whatever within the last week and, like, what it would be like if, you know, if, if uh, Zuki just sent me the, yo, you got to check this dude out, right? F and Mecca, he's new, he's hot, he's on the, he's coming up, and I knew nothing about him, and you just sent me something. Like, if I liked his music, it wouldn't matter to me if he was a, you know, a digital, digitally created thing or if it was a real person, right? right? So, like, it's it's interesting, like, how that comes about. Well, and nowadays, uh, as a musician, you are buying into the character. Right. You're not just buying the music artist. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're a brand, right? You put out a certain vibe and, like, yeah. Well, yeah, and you're a character. I mean, like you were saying, Little Yachty and yeah. all these people, Little Pump, you know, uh, Takashi 6 9 Yeah. When you first... You know, when people started listening and noticing Takashi 6 9 you noticed him because of the way he looked. His rainbow braided hair, rainbow 69s braid. everywhere, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he got noticed because of something really that wasn't the music, you Correct. know? So, on that topic, if people will pay attention and they just want entertainment, why would a record company dump all of this money into an artist, a real artist that might... Have yeah, success, no. or you could go fuck it. Let's just dump out a hundred different digital artists. This one's gonna be a um, black lesbian girl. This one's gonna be a Swedish uh, tall six foot five uh, rapper. This one's gonna be a yeah. this, and you could have every. You demogra cover all the bases, and yeah, and the demographics exactly. quite easily, right? They all do different things. They all. It's very interesting to see. It's going to be very interesting to see where this where this goes. Exactly, and it seems like we're at the start right now, right? Well, yeah, and we are. We're entering that age of mm -hmm. AR, augmented reality. Right. VR is virtual reality. Everything is made up. AR, augmented reality, is combining the virtual world with the real world. Right. That's what F and Mecca is. That's what this little Michaela is. And I think we're going to start seeing that a lot more in other styles of entertainment as well. Well, right, and it's already, like, in the, in the sense, like I said earlier, I know I've said this, but it's the fact that, you know, these people have massive followings already yeah like huge followings that like yeah it is most, a thing most real people like i would say 95 percent of real people in life maybe even more than that don't have that 
Right. Like a fraction of that. Well, FN Mecca has got a billion views. I would love that our show it's had incredible. a billion views. I mean, views. that's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so we're going to probably start seeing them uh, in movies and just in pop culture in general. Like I said, these digital characters can do anything. Yeah. So if you're just looking for an entertainment value, um, why not spend a little bit of your time if you're looking for an entertainment video to watch something that looks like a real human but can do a triple backflip off of a moving Lamborghini going 100 miles an hour and he lands on a skateboard and then he starts rapping exactly. and doing a music video. Especially if you can appreciate what it is as well, right? Yeah, well, and if you can uh, blend that line of real and fake to sure. where when you're watching, you're like... That looks like a real person yeah. doing it. Yeah. You know, does yeah. it need to be Takashi 6ix9ine or can it be a digital thing that looks like Takashi 6ix9ine? Right. You know, so mm -hmm. tell us what you think down in the comments. If uh, you think digital cool robots that can do everything is the future or you want to keep it real with the human element and that's all you're going to be listening to, let us know down in the comments and uh, we'll talk about it next week. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep tabs on this, you know, and just see where it's about because I do feel like it's something that's just kind of, you know, taking hold and it's only going to go up from here. Exactly. All right, so we're going to hit up our next topic right now, uh, something that's a little bit more forbidden. Yeah. Okay. Don't do we it. We have covered a few travel uh, segments here on this show already. Yep. We've told you some cool festivals to go to. We've told you a cool little uh, place you can go underwater diving for some sunken cities. Yep. This next segment, though, we're going to tell you some places that you will never be going. Cannot go. Nope. These are forbidden places. Yeah. Now, not only forbidden places, because there's tons of those, we narrowed it down to forbidden islands. Yes. Yeah. All right. These islands you are not going to go to on your next vacation, and you probably don't want to go to these islands. Even if these islands were open, would you want to go to any of them? No. 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 Um, yeah, looking at the list, there's might be one. There's one that's just like a remote geographic island that might be kind of cool to check out. It's a volcanic island, but the rest of these islands, you want nothing to do. I mean, with, the travel alone to some of these would just not be worth it. And just what's going on there. I, yeah, you, that, you couldn't enjoy yourself. No. You know what's going on there. You know what's happened there. So for you to even try to enjoy yourself is going to be hard. So our list, we've narrowed it down to five. We got five forbidden islands you are not going to uh, for your next vacation. Number one on the list is Snake Island. Snake Island. That's right. Yeah. Now, you can already know why this or why you don't want to go to this island. It's called Snake Island because yep. it is just massively overpopulated with snakes. Yeah. This is a island off the coast of Brazil, off the coast of uh, Sao Paulo. Yep. And... It is just overrun by snakes. Infested. 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 One snake per square meter. Yep. Okay? Yep. So if you have a dinner table at your house, you probably have about two or three snakes on your dinner table at your house. Yeah, I think Googling a picture of this place alone is enough to uh, make you not want to go. Yep. Uh, for all of you watching, uh, our production assistant Zamora has joined again. Yeah, she's all about it. She this weekend, loves she? the YouTube yeah. show, well, bro. She knows, she knows the people are doing something, so she's like, I got to get up there, she show my face. If you like Zamora being in the show, drop us a comment. We're going to give her our own little uh, segment one day. Yeah. She is a trooper. She's great. She loves the show. She loves being out here. She works for free. She does. Yeah, well, great. not for free. Yeah. A couple cans she of works tuna. For, she works for food. Yeah, she works yeah, she for does. food. But yeah. we love her. We love you, Zamora. Good we girl. Do. We do. All right, so... Back to Snake Island, uh, it is infested with snakes. Uh, there's one type of snake there. It's very venom venomous. Yeah. It's called the... Uh, golden Lancehead Viper. Golden Lancehead Viper. Yeah. That's it. And I think it, it, it uh, accounts for 90% of all snake bites in, uh, in Brazil. It does. Yeah. So it's a very uh, venomous snake, and it will bite you. Now, what happened was the island was... Uh, from the rising tides, the island got cut off from the mainland. So some of the snakes had gotten out there, and then uh, with the water levels changing, it kind of secluded the island and uh, blocked it off. So the snakes weren't able to return right. to the mainland. They got stuck out there. They just kept breeding and breeding and breeding. It's uh, it, When you look at the island, too, it's not an enjoyable island. It's got lots of trees. It's very rugged. So it's not something that humans would even really want to go to. Right. So the snakes just took it over. 
And um, there's just literally tens of thousands of snakes out on this island. So they just don't let you go out there. It's too dangerous. You will get bitten. Yeah. And there's really nothing for you to do out there. Yeah, I mean, some of these places you can have permits to go to and you can get to if you're a journalist or a reporter or scientific researcher or something of those sorts. But uh, this one is uh, just strictly prohibited. Yep, that's in Brazil. Do not yeah. go to Snake Island. Yeah, go All to right. Brazil. Go to Carnival. There's a uh, island in El Nido, Philippines called Snake Island, which is a much better Snake Island destination. Sure it is. Number four takes us to India. This is a little bit more popular one because there's been some controversy and scandals going on around it. Right. North Sentinel Island in India. This is also a no, no, go, go place. No, no, go, go. All right. Now, even if you could go to this place, you don't want to go there. Why? Because you will get killed. Yep. This is not maybe or not. This is you're going to get killed. Uh, the people that live out there, the Sentinelese, yep. Sentinelese tribe, they've been living out on this island for uh, 50,000 years. Yep. Okay. Their, their ancestors have so been yeah. traced yep. back. So they've been on this island. Now, what's uh, unique about them is they've been cut off from the modern world yeah. since the beginning of They're time. They're the last uncontacted tribe out there. Yeah, well, they got some of the rainforest, I think. But, yeah, this is like I mean, an official one, like, right. hey. And the Indian government has protected them. Yes. So you have a three-mile radius around North Sentinel Island that is the no-go zone. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's kind of like a heritage site because, like you said, it is the last group of people that are just living out there no technology no sort of uh modern uh amenities or anything yeah no yeah and exactly and the reason one of the reasons it's so dangerous is because they haven't been exposed to you know certain diseases and stuff like that and if you know somebody goes there they contract the, the disease it'll wipe them all out exactly and um they don't want they don't want us outside there. people no, there no if you even try to step on the island you get met with a barrage of arrows yeah and uh, there was a guy named uh, old John Allen Chow. John Chow. He found this out the hard way. He did. John, what were you doing? Recently, just a couple years ago, right? John, what were you doing, bro? 2018, I think. Yeah. He goes over there trying to preach the, preach the word of Christ. Exactly. And gets arrowed down. This guy earned his spot in the Darwin Awards because you don't go to try to preach religion, Christianity... To a group of tribal people that live in India that don't speak English, that have no contact with the outside world, and you think that you're going to show up on their island and teach them about Christ speaking this English? Is not the move. Man. It's one of the dumbest things I mean, I've I ever don't heard. Like, what, what, what's going on, like in in your mind, to make you think, you know, this is this is what I'm going to do. This is what I was born to do exactly and he was warned they told him don't yeah, do yeah, it like, don't do it man like what are you doing he didn't like uh he thought he was going to south sentinel island and he accidentally ended up on north sentinel island it was like do not go here and he said no i gotta go teach them about god they need they need god he doofed it and he went out there and he was met like we said with a barrage of arrows right when he got to the island and uh yeah he died he paid, he paid. Paid the price with his life. And these are barbarian tribal people. Like, yeah. there's no sort of, uh, you know, normal societal uh, rules and regulations on them. They'll kill you. I think they hung him up or cut him up. I mean, they let everybody know, like, hey, don't come to the island. This is what happens. Yep. And they've tried to do other stuff, too. They've tried to, like... Um, pull boats up and float things to them. You know, they've been shot. They've tried to, like, drop packages to them and stuff like that. Like, hey, here's some medicine. Here's some medical stuff. You know, stuff to help them. They just reject it. They want yeah. nothing to do with the outside world. Yeah. So. I mean, they've been around 50,000 years without it. I mean. Yeah. So, uh, North Sentinel Island in India, you are not going there. Um, but check them out online. It's yeah, a pretty it's, cool little place. It's definitely interesting. Okay. Um. Next on our list, like I said, there's another island in the Philippines that you could go to. On our list, we have an island called Brother Island, North Brother Island. Yeah. Okay. This is right off the coast of New York. Yeah. Okay. Now, the reason this is off limits is because a lot of creepy shit went on there. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. They had a chick named Typhoid Mary who had typhoid and was just a whack job and all sorts of wacky shit was going on there. Yeah. 
Now, this has been a whack job island. This has been a quarantine island. It's been a rehab center. I mean, basically, New York dumped all their trash out on this island. Yeah. You know, so you had, uh, back in the day, you had Riverside Hospital that was set up there. And they would bring out mentally uh, ill people. They would bring out uh, people that had drug problems. Uh, a lot of, you know, they use it as a quarantine yeah. facility for yeah, a while. Polio, tuberculosis, uh, typhoid, shit like that. They, exactly. You know. And so you had it as a quarantine hotel back in the day. And then once that was uh, done, they changed it into a rehab center and a mentally ill hospital, Riverside Hospital. And then after that... They didn't want anything to do with it. Well, I think the place also just kind of was deteriorating and shit, and it was just like... Yeah, it looks exactly like what you would expect out of a horror movie. Yeah, I mean, it's just... yeah, It's this small, dark island with no real growth and the old kind of stony buildings. And uh, that movie, uh, Shutter Island, remember that one? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio? Of course, dude. That was my guy. I mean... yeah. They might have shot Shutter Island at uh, yeah, North Brother Island, Island because yeah. it's that same sort of vibe. Yeah. Um, so out there, it was just full of disease. Yeah. You had, you know, a bunch of weird stuff going on out there. You had a bunch of sick people, you know, I think stories of ghosts and haunted spirits and everything about this island was just disgusting. So they've uh, locked it off. You can only go out there if you have a uh, special permit. Yeah, it's a bird sanctuary now. So I think scientists and or whatever studying the birds, you can go out there. I don't, yeah, it's not strictly forbidden, but you have to go through a government permit process and you got to be allowed on there and stuff like that. So. Yeah, you can't just pull your boat up nah. and go have a little afternoon picnic at North Brother. No. Cannot. But where you can have a picnic on Brother Islands, if you ever go out to El Nido, there is a super badass uh, little private island out there that my brother that my boy owns, mm-hmm. Brother Island. Shout out to my boy Ali. Yeah, uh, we had uh, some of our good friends' wedding there that uh, Zuki set up for us. Zach and Shay, shout out to them. That oh was yeah, amazing man. That was amazing. It was private island just. So that's uh, Brother Island in El Nido, Philippines. You do want to go there, and you do not want to go to North Brother Island, New York. You do. Maybe wait a little while if you want to go there for the, to the Philippines still, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. if they ever let your <laughs> ass have, in. If they ever let you back in, you should go. Jeez. Probably should have went when we went. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so. All right. So that was number three on our list. We got two more uh, places you shouldn't go. And the next one on our list is a lot like North Brother Island. Yeah, very similar. A little darker, actually. Yeah. Yeah, but similar. Yeah, very similar vibe. But this one is across the world in the Mediterranean Sea in Greece. All right, this one is called... Venice, Venice. Oh, sorry, Venice. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, Venice, Italy, you're right. This is called Poveglia. Correct. Poveglia Island. Sorry, Poveglia Paveglia Island, um, near Venice. Uh, same thing. In the 18th century, it was set up for plague victims. Uh, you know, this was kind of standard back then. Yeah, the day. yeah, very similar, very similar situation, Brother yeah. Island. Well, this has kind of just been things humans do all the time. Like, that's kind of how Australia was founded, yeah. too. Like, yo, all the criminals and shit. Let's yeah, just, just throw them over there on that big fucking dangerous... Yeah, animal, wild animal infested island. And Throw them on an island. Out. Yeah. So they did the same thing with the plague people, yeah. and the same thing with all these sick people back in the day. They used it as a plague center, and they sent all the plague people there in the 18th century. Century. Yep. Next century, in 19th century, they started doing um, mental, or sorry, they started doing human experiments out there on mentally ill patients. Yep. So it was set up as like a mentally ill a men- a psych ward yeah psych ward mental institute where they were doing yeah testing different yeah stuff on them i'm sure like electroshock therapy all that kind of stuff was going down shutter island shutter, type yeah, shit just yeah. some wacky shit right so all these uh weird experiments were going on out there there was uh reports of torture and electroshock therapy and all this weird stuff going on out there that was shut down and now it's just an island that uh yeah you can't go to yep uh the Italian government has shut it down. You can't go out there, and it's the same thing like like North Brother Island. Yeah, lots of bad things went on out there, and it's just kind of something they don't. Well, right. I think they just want you to kind of forget about it, right? They're like they just yeah. forbid you more for the sense that like oh some bad shit was going on here. We don't want people remembering, so we just tell people they can't go. Right. So then it's like you know 
can't go, people are eventually maybe going to just forget it exists. Right. Seems like they'd probably, like, remodel it or something at some point, you know? Yeah, I mean, if it's worth it. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah. The yeah. island itself isn't anything great. It's not like a tourist no. destination. No. But it is an island. It's like yeah. Alcatraz in uh, San Francisco. Sure. You know, it's just sitting there. Um, they're not going to use it for a prison again, so it... Yeah. But... Uh, and the last one on our list is something completely different than all the other ones. This is just a natural nature reserve. Yep. It's called Heard Island. It's owned by the Australian government. It's way down south. It's actually, it's an Antarctic island that's owned by the Australian government. Exactly. Yeah. It, it just looks like a big glacier, more it's or like less. It's like a volcanic island, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. volcanic yeah. island. Um, they own it. The Australian government owns it. There's nothing there except for just a lot of natural geophysical stuff. So Penguins. They, yep, there's some penguins there. There's penguins. So they've just blocked it off and just they're preserving it for nature reasons. Uh, like you said, there is an active volcano there. Uh, penguins, there's a lot of like biodiversity. Uh, yeah. And they just don't want it spoiled. So they've uh, blocked it off for the rest of the world. You can't go there. And I think it's also one of the most remote islands in the world as well. Yeah, it's way down so it's, there. It's, they, it's far. From, like, the location, uh, if you know where Madagascar is down there and Antarctica at the bottom, it's it's almost all the way to Antarctica from Madagascar. It's, like, two-thirds of the way to Antarctica. Yeah, it's down yeah. there. Yeah, it's far. So that's Heard Island, and those are our five islands you will not be going to for your next vacation. Don't go. No. Okay, Jay Stevens, how you feeling over I'm there? I'm feeling bro? good, man. I'm excited for our next topic. Yes. I like food. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, he does. We do. I like food. Yeah, we had this topic. We actually had it for another episode, and we've just kind of switched some things around, and we're going to fit it in today for you. Yeah. This one's called Weird Food of Asia. Yeah. We've had some experiences with these. Now, there's some not, but some yes. Yeah, yeah, we have some firsthand experience for you on a lot of these, actually. And if you have other ones, there are a lot. Yeah. There's, Asia has some wacky food, man. So there are a lot. These are the 10 that we thought were the most interesting and stuff that we know about a little bit as well. Yeah. Um, we looked at a lot of weird food. There's obviously a lot of weird food all over the world, but Asia, we know from our experience, definitely has some weird stuff. Oh, yeah. Now, we want to preface this by saying we didn't really include all the weird stuff of China into yeah. this list. No, we didn't. We maybe some, but I don't. I'm not sure. But there are, there's a lot in China. Yeah, because you got stuff there like them eating dog yeah. and eating all this weird stuff. We didn't want to include on the list, so yeah. we've narrowed it down to some other stuff. Yeah, some stuff that we like. Um, what? What? I mean, so the first one we're talking about is uh, Beilut, and Beilut is. Uh, Beilut. Balut. 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 Balut is uh, from the Philippines. And what is it? Like a, a ferment, unfermented egg or a fermented egg? Or? No, 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 it's no. There's no fermenting. It's, a, um, it's an egg embryo that's uh, ah. about halfway developed. Okay. And then they hard boil it. Sure. Okay. So a hard boiled egg, you have the egg yolk. You would boil it. You pull out an egg. It's a nice uh, yeah. white rubbery feeling egg with right. a yolky little... Yellow inside, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Balut is uh, the embryo develops up about halfway, so you have little bones in there. You have yeah. the beak. You can yeah. see little and eyeballs. Bird, yeah. the, the development of the feathers. And then they hard-boil that, and then so when you eat that, you're eating a hard-boiled egg, but you're getting all the crunchy bones and uh, development of the bird. Right, and it's also like you're sitting on a beautiful beach in the philippines laid back maybe a cold beer in your hand and they're walking around with a styrofoam cooler selling these eggs for you know 10 pesos or whatever and yeah i mean it's i i have personally never tried one have you i've tried one but no i don't eat them no yeah. i mean it's like you know it's a little bit more of a mental thing i think a lot of these things on our list yeah. a lot of it is mental. i mean i've seen them being sold you know everywhere in the philippines so i know you know they are around and they're Oh, yeah. A real, real thing. I'm sure if you were blindfolded and someone cut it up for you and said, here, try this, you would say, oh, it tastes like hard-boiled right. egg. It's a little crunchy. What, what's that other thing in there? And they'd say, oh, that's the bird. That's the bird. That's the feathers and right, shit. Right, so right. Uh, then you might not be enjoying it. But I think on a taste level, that's kind of what you're sure, getting. You know, sure. It's yeah. not too crazy. But 
there is the mental psychological aspect of with a lot of these foods, right? Not yeah. wanting to eat that. Exactly. And I'm one of those people. I'm sorry, Philippines. I love you, but I don't love your balut. Yeah, I love the Philippines. Okay, there's another one from the Philippines that we're going to cover. I have tried this one too, and it is called the uh, bird's nest. Okay, bird's nest is they. It's in a very expensive little uh, delicacy. Yep. They take the saliva these swift these uh, swift birds in the part of the Philippines. They create their nest by spitting up this. Uh, Saliva. Saliva. Yeah. It's, and it's it comes up and it kind of forms up and it gets hard and they make their little nest. They make a little bird's nest out of this stuff. And it's uh, very expensive. It's very hard to get because you have to climb way up in these caves to get it. And they make this soup out of it. Mm -hmm. The Chinese really love it. Um, I had a Russian TV show. I used to have a restaurant in the Philippines. And we had a Russian reality show come to El Nido where I was living and they wanted to try it. So there's a, hey, can you help us get this stuff? Called up a few people I knew. I was able to get the bird's nest. And then, uh, yeah, we arranged it at my restaurant. They came in. We made a little bit of the soup for them. They tried it on the stuff. So, you know, it's a, it's a lot more hype than it is. I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine. It, you're not really getting any taste. It's not something like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Now I see why everybody wants to drink this soup. Right. It's just, um, it's got some powers to it. You know, it's got some health benefit to it. And it's just very highly sought after because it's so hard to get. Mm -hmm. So it's something for kind of like the rich people. Sure. It's like when you eat caviar. Oh, caviar. But now you're going to eat bird throw up. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy yeah. that. Yeah. So that's called Bird's Nest. That's out of the Philippines as well. Um, don't recommend that. And actually, you probably aren't going to find that. It's very hard to find. Yeah. Um, don't even waste your time with that one. All right. The next one's on our list, though. You're going to definitely be able to find all of these. They are in different parts of Asia. And they are waiting for you to eat them. Yes, they are. Okay. Um, should we knock a few Taiwan ones out yeah, real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We got a couple off the Taiwan list. So yeah. these are ones that we've experienced here in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. You're going to experience them with us right now, too. Number one, it's not too weird, but it's just, it's kind of like the stereotypical um, weird food of the night market. Stinky tofu. Oh, yeah. It's a Taiwanese classic. Okay. Stinky tofu is those two words exactly. It's tofu that smells very bad and it's stinky. It smells, it smells bad. It yeah. smells very bad. Yeah. Now, when you're walking through the markets and stuff, you definitely know when you're around a stall selling Stinky yeah, tofu. I mean, if it's your, like for us now, I mean, we're used to it at this point. But if you're, you know, we've had family or friends that come visit and that smell hits you for the first time, like, it's rank, man. It's like, what the fuck is that? What's, what died? Yeah, what, what did that? What the hell is in it? It's a mix of combo and spices and stuff, yeah, right? There's, yeah, it's like some, there's like some clay, some corn husk and... Yeah. Yeah, it's a bunch chili, of... Chili, garlic sauce, or you eat it with chili and yeah, garlic sauce. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like kind of like a square, cubey looking piece of tofu, and then you eat off of that. Yeah. A lot of times they cook it with the uh, real spicy soup, uh, and they use the pig's blood. Yeah, and you can have it fried or not fried. Uh, fried is more manageable. Yeah. It's more, I mean, it's fried, so it's like it's easier for me to personally to stomach. Uh, the other stuff I do not care for. And I think on this one, it's a little bit better because essentially you still are just eating uh, bean curd. You're eating yeah. stinky yeah. bean curd. Some of these other ones, like I said, you're eating a half-developed bird. Yeah. You're eating a live octopus. You're eating bugs and insects. Like There's a lot of that stuff that you mentally might not want to wrap your head around. Right. Stinky tofu, it's the smell that gets you. It's not such a mental thing. If you can get past the smell, you're in. Mm-hmm. Okay, so exactly. uh, check that out. You can eat that in Taiwan, in the night markets. You can find it everywhere. Uh, the other one that made our list from Taiwan is kind of discontinued now. You can't find it anymore. It's snake's blood soup. Yep, snake's blood soup. There used to be a famous night market here in Taipei City uh, near the Longshan Temple, and it was called Snake Alley. Yep. So you had one alley in this market that they sold uh, a bunch of snakes, you could go there and buy snake blood. Yeah, the market is still there. The snake, the snake situation is not. Exactly. Yeah, you, yeah, you used to be able to buy, uh, you could do shots of like snake bile, uh, snake blood, 
and like a not snake venom, but some sort of you know thing like that. And yeah, you just take three sh- snake alcohol or whatever. You take three so- shots of that with the you know bartender, or the snake guy or whatever. And yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. Like you know, they'd have the snakes on display, and you know. Yeah, and when you used to go to the restaurant, you'd see the boss. I mean, his fingers look yeah, like this. Mangled, you, you know. know? Have, yeah. Out of 10 fingers, I think he had about like 4.25 fingers. Yeah. You know, every yeah. finger was like nubbed, and you could see where cobras had bit him, and he had to get his finger amputated. Yeah. Uh, they are cobras, too. Like, when you walk through the market, you'll see them have the cobra right there on the table and kind of playing with it, and yeah. it's, you know, all perked up with its hood up. And they just stopped this semi recently. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, since, I mean, I've been here about eight years. It's been, when I was here, it was still going on. Yep. So within the last maybe four or something years, they've, they've stopped. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things uh, on the humane animal yeah. humanity type thing, yeah. but also people just didn't want to do it. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the new generation, they want to go. It's more of an old school thing. I think they want to go catch Pokemon's yeah. and, uh, do TikTok dances. They don't yeah. want to go to the night market and drink snake venom and snake blood. Yep. Agreed. Um, I'm sure somewhere in Asia, they're still selling snake. Blood. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. just not in Taiwan, nope. but that did make our list for. Yeah. Weird it's, food. it's definitely interesting. So we got two from the Philippines, Balut and Bird's Nest. We got two from Taiwan, Stinky Tofu, Snake's Blood. Oh, wait, hold on. Before we move on, we forgot uh, the, the, uh, the animal blood of Taiwan. Okay. Yeah, we're going to throw that back in. Rewind. Uh, coagulated animal blood. Most uh, popular is the pig's blood. Pig's blood cake, yeah. Okay. You have pig's blood and you also have duck blood. Yep. Okay. Yep. What happens there is they take the blood and they make like a jelly out of it. So you get kind of this soft tofu jelly textured piece of coagulated blood. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Kind of. It's actually, some of them kind of reminds you of like a little sponge or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if you've ever made jello at home where you mix it up and you freeze it and afterwards it kind of gets all jello-y and uh, soft yeah. like that. That's what you're getting, but it's made with blood. Yeah. And you know what? It's actually, I mean, like, yeah, it's called pig's blood cake, but you're not eating it and you're not like... Ooh, that tastes like blood. It just tastes like I don't. I actually don't really enjoy it very much. But no, you know. Well, in a lot of these Asian dishes, uh, the people eat them for the health benefit yeah, they have. Yeah. Western people, you hear a lot of this stuff, and you're like, hell no, I'm right. not eating that. Yeah. Asian people and Asian cuisine, they'll eat a lot of this stuff for the health benefits. So, for example, when you eat the eye of a fish. That's good for your eyes. Right. When you eat the intestines of an animal, that's good for your intestines and your digestive tract. Okay. When you eat chicken feet that's got cartilage, that's good for your skin and your cartilage. Yeah. So, and, but if you're ordering, you know, pig's blood here in Taiwan, you can go to a lot of restaurants and get it, right? Like, it's not like this is something that it's like the snake's blood, right? Like, you're not going to find that everywhere. Not anymore. But like uh, pig's blood cake, you can get it a lot of places. Yeah. Yeah, you can. It's out there. Uh, you can have my portion if you ever uh, are yeah. interested in that. I'll give you all of mine. Yeah. Um, okay. Now we're going to fly over to Japan. Japan's got some weird ones. Yeah. You know what Japan loves to eat? They love to eat the balls yeah, of they, fish. They like testes. They love those testes, yeah, boy. They yeah, they do. Two of the things on the list are the <laughs> testicles yeah, of both, sea creatures. Yeah, both the ones we found were balls. Yep. <laughs> okay, so... First one is called Shirako. Yep. Okay, Shirako is male codfish sperm sac. Yep. Let me go ahead and rewind that for you. It might have been hard to digest. Male codfish sperm sac. Yeah, and uh, you check out a picture of that. It looked they're little white things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. They're just little, yeah, little white things. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And yeah, they come and it's very expensive. It's very, uh, very highly it's like sought delicacy, after. Yeah, yeah, it does not look enticing at all. Yeah, but it's out there. Yeah, it looks like you get it at like a sushi kind of place or a raw, you know, seafood sort of place, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, another one in Japan that is some balls is called uni. Yep. Uni is sea urchin balls. Yeah. Now I have had this. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I had some DJ shows out there a few years ago, and uh, the promoter, she took me out to the restaurant. We went to this nice high-end Japanese restaurant, 
And you in Japanese culture, you have to show respect and you have to accept gifts when people give them to you. So we go to this nice restaurant and they order me this expensive sea urchin and you see them pop it open and you're looking in it. It's all orange and it's a sea urchin. Did you, eat, did you eat it? Did you eat it before you knew? No. That I, it was balls or you, they told you it was balls and then you ate it? No, they just said, here, yes. have this. So you ate it first. Yeah, you just don't yeah, ask questions. Well, exactly. Right. And what'd you think? I mean, I wash it down with the sake real quick. I tell you that much. You yeah, know, it's yeah, just yeah. I don't like that texture sure, and taste. Sure, sure. I don't li really like raw oysters uh, and stuff like that. So, okay. it it is that one's a very mental thing too, man. It's not very tasty. Um, you have to really like that sort of seafood palate yeah. of that weird yeah. seafood um, type stuff. Yeah, I was just wondering if like you ate it and you're like, oh, that's pretty good, and then they're like, oh, that was you know. Oh, no, no, balls no, no, that you're no. like, oh, fuck that. <laughs> no, yeah. dude, no, they, they let me know. They didn't tell me it was sea urchin balls, but they, they, just, just, go, they just go here, and right. they open it up, and you just have to eat yeah, the whole fucking exactly. thing. Um, sure. I, I guess the balls are in there somewhere. I don't really know. Yeah. I didn't get specifically served the sea urchin balls, but with the sea urchin, yes, they pop it open, bring it, and you eat out all the meat and mm -hmm. maybe all the balls, too. Yep, probably. Okay, so those are in Japan, and do we have any more in Japan? I don't, think, I don't so. think so. Oh, yeah, we did. We had the tuna eyeball. Yeah, tuna eyeball. Tuna eyeball. Yeah. Tuna, uh, as you're probably aware of, is a very big thing in Japan. Yeah. Some of these tunas that uh, they catch can sell for a million dollars. Oh, yeah. You know, the perfect healthy tuna that all these sushi and sashimi restaurants can get, they'll pay high end, high dollar for this meat. Oh, yeah. They also pay high dollar for this tuna eyeball. Yep. Okay. Yep. And it's exactly what you think. It's yeah, a I mean, big tuna eyeball, and you just eat the eyeball. Yeah, I mean, they prepare it in a bunch of different ways. I think that you can fry it, eat it raw, stew it, or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, there's really, all the same. There's really no tricks to it. Yeah, there's really no tricks to it's it. The, it's the uh, some seasoning and some spice and some sauce and uh, a yep. tuna eyeball. Yep. Okay? Yep. So if you're going to Japan, you can eat some balls, and you can eat some eyeballs. Yes, you can. Go to Japan. Okay, um, right next to Japan, their neighbors, the Koreans, mm -hmm. you know, they didn't come up short in this category either. They got they some weird, it. funky stuff as well. Yes, they do. So, out of all the list, I think this is the one I like the least. If I had to try them all, this is probably the one I would go to last. Yeah, this one irks you a little bit, huh? Yeah. Okay, this one's called san Sanakji. Sanakji. Sanakji, yep. Okay. Sanakji is the live tentacles of octopus. Yep. Okay. We're going to throw a video on for you right now so you can see this happening while we're talking about it. Basically, yeah, they take these little small octopus, pull them out, chop their tentacles off, and the tentacles are all squiggling and wiggling and worming around, and they throw a little bit of vinegar and a little bit of sauce on them, and you eat them as they're live and moving around. Yep. I, I mean, that's it. Yeah, you can is, see on the screen. That's this is exactly exactly it. what's going on. Yeah, we also saw some videos of people eating live baby octopuses as well. Yeah, now we that, decided not to do that necessarily. That's weird, man. We didn't get the term for that. Uh, if you know the term for eating the full uh, live octopus in Korea, let us know in the comments. Uh, we've seen the video. That is a fight for death basically because you have level, this little uh, octopus you throw it in your mouth and as you're chewing on it and trying to eat it it's fighting for its life too so yeah. it starts to uh, stick to your throat and the yeah, inside your esophagus your, yeah. and it'll start to like uh, I've seen videos of these people where it's like you see their face getting all red and like eyes watering up because they can't breathe yeah. as this thing is like trying I to mean, like I, I just don't see the like fulfillment in that like what like what what makes you want to do that man i don't know man so that is octopus eating in korea check that out we just showed you the video um the tentacles is called sanakji and then you can have the whole thing uh as well while you're down there yep um Getting out of Korea, we have a few more for you. These are just, in general, Southeast Asian ones. These aren't the weirdest of the weird, but they don't really sell this stuff in the West. No. Uh, you got tarantula. Yeah. Fried tarantula. Fried tarantula. That's in Cambodia. I think they just, yeah, fry it, throw some sugar or garlic on that, and... Yep. That's it. Eat it. So if you like fried chicken, yeah. go ahead and get fried tarantula, yeah, Spin. Yeah, yeah. Um... 
they love the bugs and insects over there. Yeah, too, man. And I mean, in Thailand, uh, I'm sure they have it like also in Cambodia, Malaysia, maybe a lot of those places. Like I've had uh, fried grasshopper, cricket, scorpion, like on a skewer in Thailand. And uh, yeah, that's a thing. It's, you know. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's not even that bad. It's just like a crunchy thing. You just eat it and you're not like, ew, that was gross. But you're not like, ooh, that was good. You're just like, okay, I just ate a grasshopper. Yeah. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, it's uh, like we said, it's a lot of mental uh, hurdles yeah. that you have to overcome to get this stuff into your body. But yeah. if you can do it, there's a lot of weird stuff in Asia waiting for you. Yeah. You can check that out yeah. and uh, have some fun while you're in Asia. Yep. All right, fam. All right, people. That's going to do it for us this episode. We appreciate it. But before we do, we're going to do a little episode wind down. Yep. We got uh, words of the day and some shout outs for everybody. Oh, yeah. Jay Stevens, uh, enlighten us. You got a new word for the day or what? My word of the day today is chortle. Okay. And a chortle is a chuckle or a laugh. So if you are making somebody laugh, you are making them chortle. So if someone tells you a joke, you are chortling, right? So a lot of people. Like the chortle. Yeah, and it's kind of like laughing merrily, too. Yeah. It's like, it's like a, <laughs> Yes. Oh, right? Exactly. Like you told somebody just like a gut a gut rumbling joke, and they're just... <laughs> they're chortling. They're chortling. I think that's a pretty sweet word, too. Yeah. A chortle. Sounds cooler than laugh. It does. Way yeah. cooler. Man. Dude, I was I, chortling so hard yesterday, man. That was so funny. I think I just chortled in my pants. <laughs> that is kind of what it seems like, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got a chortle head poking out or something. Exactly. We <laughs> hope you've been doing lots of chortling uh, watching our show. Just chortle it up. Okay. My word of the day is waffling. Waffling. Waffling has nothing to do with the little uh, breakfast thing that you're eating. Waffling means to speak vaguely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're waffling, you're just speaking vaguely about something. If you say, hey, uh, what do you want to do tomorrow when we meet up? Oh, uh, you know, we're just going to, you know, meet up at the let's, park and just kind of go there and do, do that thing with that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Do that thing over there with those people. <laughs> yeah, let's just do that. Yeah, if you're doing that, you're waffling. Quit waffling, homie. Okay? Quit waffling. And you might want to waffle when you don't want to uh, commit to something. So you're just kind of speaking vaguely. Oh, yeah, okay, well, yeah, maybe that or blah, blah, blah. So if you're waffling around, that's what that means. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay? Okay, we're going to do shout outs now. Jay Stevens, who you got on deck today, bro? All right, I got a shout out to my cousin Brad, aka B Rad. Brad was my college roommate. He's my cousin. I've grown up with him. We've been really good, if not best friends, for our entire life, man. I hope you're uh, tuning in. I hope you're seeing what uh, me and my boy uh, Zuki are doing. And, man, hopefully we get on here, get you on here for something soon, bro. He's your old roommate? Yeah, my co I mean, my cousin, my old roommate. Yeah. 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 All right, well, my shout-out today, too, is uh, for my roommate as well. Uh, shout-out to my boy, Sean Avery, out there in Dallas. Uh, we were roommates in college. We've been staying in touch. Uh, we used to have this badass little party house together. Super solid guy. He's always been one of my best friends. And uh, we had a little uh, rave-throwing company we did back in the day. We used to throw little electronic music parties. So uh, shout-out to my boy, DJ Volition, from your boy, DJ Therapy. Good to see you, fam. Uh, shout-out to you, your wife, your beautiful daughters as well. Yep. All right, fam, that's going to do it for us. Uh, thanks for hanging in there with us. That's episode seven yep. in the books. Yep. We're going to see you tomorrow. Yep. Peace. Yeah.